what we call our CR. As you can see, it's very open. So my first experience when I was here is learn how to accept being watched when you go to CR. So the best thing that we always do when we will go to CR, we will get a towel or anything just to cover the area here. And then also when you go to CR, you have to get your own bucket of water so that you can flush the bowl. And then, yes, that's hard. <laughs> because as for me, because I'm a foreigner, I'm used to not going to CR in front of any, anyone. So that was my most difficult part also being here. They don't allow toilet paper. You actually have to use water and soap to wash. <laughs> it's very, very hard because obvious for me as a foreigner, I'm used to tissue and then they tell me, no tissue, you use water. I'm like, I have to use my hand. It's, for me, it felt so dirty because it's not normal. I only use my hand when I'm like showering. Don't tell me to use it for using for CR. It doesn't matter if you were born in the Philippines or abroad. Like 32-year-old Debbie. The South African has been in prison for nine years now for drug smuggling, more precisely, for cocaine. There is one thing she does above all, play by the rules. In the morning, we have to wake up all at 5.30. No one is allowed to lay down after that. Then we will have our morning prayer. After morning prayer, we will be allowed to have a shower for 10 minutes. And then we will have a TC morning meeting. It's like a therapeutic meeting where we will uh, talk about the problems in the dorm and we will have news casting, people who will have news reports. And then after that, we will have counting. Even at night, Debbie does not have a single quiet moment. She has to share her bed with a stranger. We have to move slow to respect one another also when sleeping. Especially like for me, I'm a foreigner. I'm very tall, more bigger than my partner next to me. So I think I'm taking most of the space on the bed. But it's, it's hard, to, especially because it's a very small space. For example, for the bed, when we sleep, half of the bed is mine and half of the bed is hers. In the beginning, it's very hard to accept because I'm used to sleeping in my own position, sleeping freely. But now I had to get used to sleeping with someone and to have my uh, space limited. The prison has been overcrowded for a long time, although the area is huge. More than three times as many women live in the numerous wings as originally planned. Those who aren't lucky enough to get a bed sleep on the floor. There are, however, privileged PDLs who get a single bed, the elderly, the sick, and prisoners in management positions. Often there is not even enough space for personal belongings. They are stacked up in boxes, in the hallway, and under the beds. Inside, there'll be precious memories of the family and everything else one needs to survive. In my box, I will have an extra blanket, then my T-shirts and some sandals and towels. And then apart from the box, we are allowed to have a shower basket, which is always under my bed. Everything has to fit in there. It's hard because if it doesn't fit, either you have to give it away or you have to find a way to push it inside. Outside, I'm used to having a very comfortable life. I have my own room, I have my storage area, a cupboard, a very big cupboard to have enough space. And then now it's like it's so limited, a very small box, only 50 liters is the maximum because the space is occupied because we have so many PDLs. Uh, we are about 124 only in this dorm. The number of prisoners is growing, while their situation continues to deteriorate. The Correctional Institution for Women strictly limits water use, whether for drinking, 
washing, rinsing, or showering. Water for this flows only a few hours a day. Peak daily temperatures often reach 35 degrees Celsius. The only way to get through this is by having a bottle for water. You always have to have a water bottle, so in the morning you fill up your water bottle up until the afternoon when the water will be running again. It's hard. If you don't keep water, you don't have water for the day. Access to water is limited. It's the first and one of the most important lessons one must learn here, even for new arrivals in the quarantine cell. In the morning, the water comes at 5 a.m. Since there's many of you in here, you take your shower according to prison number. So take a shower early, because the water is turned off at 10 a.m. We need to clean up. Being dirty is forbidden. The women help each other with cleaning up. After all, it's for their own good. The garbage bin always has to have a lid, and the barrel should always have water inside it so that the toilet bowl will be clean. Be careful that the toilet bowl doesn't get clogged and stays clean. Without water to flush, the feces in the toilets make for an almost unbearable stench. The situation is especially extreme in quarantine. Even when water is available, prisoners still need a kind of makeshift hose. Only the dorm in charge is able to provide it. Without her help, it would not be possible to flush toilets and fill drinking water containers. And even that is not always a given. The water flow is weak, so we're checking where the problem is coming from. This hose has a lot of holes. A part of the hose must have gotten pinched somewhere outside. So I asked them to stop the water flow first and fix it before we attach the hose again. That's the problem of this hose. For many, water is simply a matter of course. But for the women in here, it's a luxury item. I expected that there would be a lot of us here, and especially because the number of prisoners always just keeps increasing. Each of us all just patiently saves water. That's why I thought of bringing a bucket here, so that I can save up water. Almost as important is the supply of food whether for new arrivals in quarantine or those outside. Prisoners prepare meals for everyone three times a day. For some, it is a chance to earn a few extra cents. But this also comes with much sweating. In sweltering tropical heat at temperatures of up to 35 degrees Celsius, the job in the kitchen working hot woks and rice stoves is one of the most strenuous in the prison. In two separate kitchens, they cook mainly fish, vegetables, and rice. It's the most important food staple. It's inexpensive and very filling. There is no canteen or dining room. Prisoners eat either in the dorms or in front of them.
Only those who have a bit of money are able to add a bit more variety to mealtime. They buy extra foodstuffs in the numerous shops and cook it wherever there is room. What's bizarre about all this is that it simultaneously gives women in prison access to any number of potentially dangerous items, like matches, gas stoves, and in the official kitchens, even knives. Complete isolation is very tough, but some prisoners have it even tougher, especially those prisoners going through a pregnancy. Not only do they lose their freedom, but also their own flesh and blood. Like Christine, who may have to serve up to 12 years here. That means for 12 years, her child may have to grow up without her. I know it will be hard when I have the baby and they take it from me. I think about it almost every night. First, the families are asked if they will take care of the child. Quite often they refuse because they are too poor themselves. But fortunately, not in this case. My youngest sister is taking the baby. I asked her to do this for me. She would rather not take the baby because she doesn't have much and life is hard enough. But she's doing it because I asked her to. A relief. Otherwise, the baby would be in the custody of the authorities. Until the time comes, fellow PDLs help take care of pregnant prisoners and support them where they can. It's not good that the baby will grow up here, especially the surrounding. It's better the baby to reach out the family. If they want to get the baby at once from the hospital, it's better. But if not, the family is not yet capable, then what, what can I do? We let the baby stay here up to six months. Six months in jail with a newborn baby, unimaginable for many mothers. The prison does not provide baby food. Yeah, the baby is walking already, the baby is talking already. So, but when the time the baby is walking, talking and say mama, it's very hard for the mother. Yeah, because she can see the babies talking, they already giving love and affection to both of them. Christine desires one thing above all, for her child to do well and for her family to somehow manage to get by. Family, it's the one thing many in here miss the most, like Debbie. She's some 12,000 kilometers away from South Africa, her home. The toughest part in here, I think, is to learn to, except like for foreigners, is to learn how to live without your family. You're so far from your family. And, uh, communication is very hard because of the time differences. And there's no other uh, times for foreigners to call except the time that they are given. So if you can't call in those times, like for us in Africa, we are six hours behind of Philippines. Uh, there's no way to communicate with them. My family, the last time I spoke to them, my mother is still crying up until now. Because on October, this reaching October, it will be nine years. And they always tell me, why is it so long? They want me to come home. And I can't explain to them when I can come home, and I can't tell them enough how sorry I am for what I've done. Until then, Debbie will serve out her sentence for smuggling 8.3 kilograms of cocaine. In the Philippines, that gets you 20 to 40 years. 
she doesn't know exactly when she'll get out. My mistake was, uh, actually I loved the wrong, the wrong man who taught me how to get involved in drugs. And as of plan of us, we were planning to use the money if I didn't get arrested, use the money to get married. So what happened, he taught me that together with my modeling job, because he knows that I'm quali qualified for modeling, I will transfer drugs from Peru to Philippines. But they, when I was still in Africa, they promised me that I will not be caught. They already paid every, all the people, so it's safe. So he actually 100% guaranteed me. And then when I got here, uh, no, there was nothing guaranteed. I was arrested on the spot. Debbie is hoping the authorities will grant her request for an appeal ahead of time. And she will be allowed to return home as soon as possible. I would do anything to turn back the time to not do it. <laughs> Until then, the only thing to do day after day is wash, eat, sleep, and persevere. In Manila's Correctional Institution for Women, the oldest and largest women's prison in the Philippines. As my sentence is life, so the only thing I can actually do is keep on praying that God have mercy on me and that my appeal gets granted so that I can go home. Home, released from one of the toughest women's prisons in the world. Packed in cramped quarters with more than 3,000 persons deprived of liberty. Everyone here is hoping for the same thing. To once again experience the taste of freedom.